I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. The Furious FPV Stealth Race is an FPV video transmitter that you can control with your freaking smartphone. Ha! <laughs> That's pretty cool. But it doesn't mean a darn thing if it's not actually just like a really solid, good video transmitter. And I've got the tool to find out. Stay tuned. Let's start by running down the specs on this video transmitter. It takes 2 to 6S input voltage, so you can power it straight off a of battery voltage. You don't need a voltage regulator on your copter to power it with. It outputs at uh, 25 and 200 milliwatts, and we are going to check that with this here Immersion RC uh, RF power meter. The output power it has it shows that it's designed for racing. Uh, a freestyle transmitter, you probably would want a little bit more transmit power uh, because you're probably flying more by yourself and you're going to have more obstacles to punch through. So for freestyle, I will often use as much as 500 or even on my Unify copters, 800 milliwatts of output power. But for racing, 200 milliwatts is more than enough and you're often going to be running at 25 milliwatts because you want to minimize interference between the pilots and get as many pilots as possible in the air. So this is really more a racing than a freestyle transmitter. Furious has told me that they will be coming out with a freestyle version of this transmitter. That version will have up to 600 milliwatt output power and it'll have a built-in microphone. So the race version that we're looking at today does not have a microphone and in fact it doesn't even have an audio line. So if you're a pilot who likes to fly with a microphone and an earbud in, then this is not the video transmitter for you. You're going to want the freestyle version or something else entirely. It also has pit mode. And pit mode means it's going to output at 0.1 milliwatts is what the specs say. Uh, it's important to point out that there are some transmitters out there that say they do pit mode. But when you look at the actual specs, they're actually outputting like 10 or 15 milliwatts in quote unquote pit mode. And that's more than enough power to have a lot of range and let you interfere with other pilots. The goal of pit mode is that you output such a tiny, tiny amount of power that you, you could get like three feet of range. So you could still stick your head next to the copter and see your signal, but you, you'll be really unlikely to interfere with anybody else. And you still shouldn't power up even in pit mode uh, at a race or anything, but it definitely minimizes the impact of mistakes where you power up maybe when you shouldn't have. So this is legit pit mode, just like a Unify or a Tramp or, or some others that are out there. The Stealth will come in both a standard 40 channel 5 band version and a 72 channel version that supports the low band. So if you're keeping track, there will actually be four different SKUs, a race and a freestyle and a 40 and a 72 channel version of both of those. I am not a fan of 72 channel video transmitters because they use frequencies that are essentially not legal to use under any conditions that you will are likely to actually experience. And in fact, it may be the case that it's not even legal to sell them in certain countries. Uh, however, there have been some large races where the organizers got permission from the FCC or the Etsy if you're in the EU or wherever, they got permission to use those frequencies. So there's a plausible scenario where this video transmitter could be used, but I don't like it because most of people are just gonna buy the 72 channel version. They're gonna set themselves on 5,300 megahertz and they're gonna go fly without any concern that they could be an interfering with somebody. And I'm just not a fan of, just throws me the wrong way. Nevertheless, there's a 40 channel and a 72 channel version that supports L-band. You should buy the 40 channel version, you numb nuts. No, I did not. So now I'm going to power it up and I'm going to show you the smartphone app haha, that uses the Bluetooth adapter that I was showing you previously. And I'm going to power this guy right off of this battery here. You'll notice I am using my smoke stopper, probably the single most useful accessory uh, in all the stuff that I do. And I'm using the smoke stopper because I'm just going to use these alligator clips here to plug into the battery. And if I were to short the alligator clips by accident, I would short the battery and bad things would happen, but the smoke stopper is going to protect me and nothing bad will happen. So I'm going to hit pair. It has a password to prevent other people from changing your settings. <laughs> Probably a good thing. And here we are. Here in the app, you can select racing, freestyle, save channel, or you can change profiles. Uh, if you have multiple transmitters, you can have different profiles for each transmitter. If we select racing, 
we can see oh well the channel that i've got selected is not available in racing mode isn't that interesting let's go to freestyle mode then fine um so here on freestyle mode we've got uh we can change the transmit power between 25 and 200 milliwatts in racing mode we can only use 25 milliwatts we can see the uh, temperature of the unit here and the unit does have temperature protection so as it heats up it will reduce the transmit power as it gets to be too hot and try and bring the temperature down we can set the channel and of course we can set all of the different modes that it supports this is the 72 channel version so I could put it on one of these low band channels like 5399 that isn't legal to use we can change the channel there and we can set what startup mode is in so here right now it's starting up in pit mode and we can take it out of pit mode either by using the app or of course by using uh, tramp telemetry protocol by the way this does support tramp telemetry protocol so you can change it from your Betaflight OSD or from your Tyrannus with your Lua script I'm showing you the the app right now but that's an option or you can press the button here to take it out of pit mode manually so it can start up in pit mode it can start up with no power it's just powered down or it can start up uh, in normal mode at full power. This here protect changes that whether the heat protection is on or off. You do have the option of turning the overheating protection off if that's what you want to do. The next thing I did was I hooked up this wonderful Immersion RC RF power meter and I measured the output power of the video transmitter. In case you're not familiar with this little beauty, uh, well, it's an RF power meter. Basically, it tells you how much power the video transmitter is putting out or you can hook an antenna up to it and it'll tell you how much power the antenna is receiving. So it's super useful for figuring out, well, 200 milliwatts, but is it putting out 200 milliwatts? Uh, now you can know. It runs about, I think it's about 150 bucks, and that sounds like a lot until you think about, look up how much professional grade RF equipment is. It's really a, a bargain if you if you need it. Uh, this one was graciously provided by GetFPV, and I thank you to them for that. And of course, the link is down in the video description. Here's the result of the testing, and it was like two hours of me screwing around on the bench, figure, trying to make sure my results were valid, so I'm not going to show you all the footage. At 25 milliwatts output power, it outputs just about dead on 25 milliwatts, like almost exactly 25 milliwatts, and it does that all the time. Under every conditions, it doesn't get hot enough no matter, well, I didn't like put a blanket on it or anything. So if you've sandwiched this thing deep in your stack, wrapped in heat shrink, maybe it will overheat even at 25 milliwatts, I don't know. But even just hanging in the air with no heat sink or anything like that, it was fine. It was rock solid at 25 milliwatts. At 200 milliwatts, however, it didn't do quite as well. And I'm going to show you these results so you can see for yourself. But the gist of it is that as soon as you power it up at 200 milliwatts, it starts to get hot enough that it starts backing off its transmit power. Most of the time, it was at around 21 dBm, which is a little bit over 100 milliwatts. 20 dBm is 100 milliwatts. 23 dBm is 200 milliwatts. So, you know, maybe that's around, I don't know, I can do the math in my head, but it hung out around 21 dBm. Um, and, and that was with airflow. You'll see I have it hanging in front of a fan. <laughs> and, and so my conclusion is that under a lot of real world conditions, it's not going to be able to achieve 200 milliwatts because it's going to get hot enough that it's not going to do that. So let me show you the results of the testing. You can see for yourself. Okay, so here I've powered up and it's in pit mode. You can see it's reading minus 13, whatever dBm. It's flashing, which indicates it's not in the accurate range. So now I've powered it on and you can see it's right at 23 dBm. Fantastic. That's 200 milliwatts exactly. But it's quickly dropping to 22, 22.5. It's dropping down. And I'm just going to let this play out because I want you to see. I've, I've also enlarged the temperature meter there, although it's a little hard to read. But I want you to see how this plays out in real time over the course of about a minute the temperature rises pretty quickly and the output power drops pretty quickly. Uh, I have got, as I said, the unit hanging in front of a little fan. You can see it down in the lower right and the temperature goes up and up and eventually it settles in at right around 20 dBm. And that's pretty much where it stays. Uh, sorry, 21 dBm. And that's pretty much where it stays as long as I've got the fan blowing on it. It pretty much holds at that. If I turn the fan off, then it very quickly starts, it goes up to 70, 80, 90 degrees Celsius and drops even lower. And here we've skipped exactly one minute and four seconds later, 
it's at 20.95 dBm, just about 21 dBm, and that's just where it stays. As long as the air is blowing on it, that's where it sits. Now I've got a little bonus for you guys who've stuck with me this long. I took a TBS Unify, and I set it to 200 milliwatts, and I did the same test, and I set it to 500 milliwatts, and I set it to 800 milliwatts, and I'm going to show you those results. But I do want to tell you, I also tried various things to try and be fair to the stealth race. Like, for example, I strapped it to a piece of carbon fiber plate, a spare, a spare plate from a quadcopter, to act as kind of a heat sink to reflect how it might really be used. And the results were basically the same no matter what I did. The only thing I can think of that would make the stealth race perform better would be to give it more airflow, which, granted, on a quadcopter, it's going to have a lot of airflow. But it, it really immediately started dropping power as soon as it hit, like... 40 or 45 degrees Celsius and there's just I mean it, it almost hit that heat level just sitting there in pit mode Okay, so I really think it's I don't think that even no matter how much air you blow on it while it's on a quadcopter It's gonna be able to hit 200 milliwatts in real life Especially because although the props make a lot of air. It's true depending on where it's mounted it may not actually be getting very much airflow, and that's especially true because it's such a small video transmitter. It's really designed to kind of be tucked away, right? Well, maybe that's not such a good idea. Here's the test results from the Unify. The first test I'm going to show you is this test that I did with a TBS Unify race. I, I actually didn't realize it was a race at the time. The race only goes up to 200 milliwatts, and that's the output power we're at at this test. And what I want you to see is how well it manages heat buildup. And here I'm plugging it in. You'll see it's going to go right to 23 dBm. And there you go, 22.7 dBm. Now watch the temperature. The temperature is going to rise, but just watch it. Some of you may be surprised to hear me saying that the DBS Unified manages heat buildup well. Uh, they're well known for getting super hot if you leave them plugged in without airflow. That's mostly the high volt version, the pro version rather, with, uh, with on the higher output powers, 500 and 800 milliwatts. Uh, but you can see here, the temperature is going up slowly and the power is holding really rock steady at right around 22 and change dBm. You might think, oh, well, only 1 dBm. The, the, the uh, Furious was at like 21, but 1 dBm, the, remember the difference between 100 and 200 milliwatts is only 3 dB. So 1 dB, 1.5 oh, dB is a pretty substantial difference. And we can keep going. It, it does get hotter, but it doesn't get much hotter. And I think the reason for that goes down to size. The, the Furious Stealth has focused on being really small, and that means it doesn't have the ability to dissipate heat as well. Everything else about this test is pretty much exactly the same. So now I've got a Unify Pro, and I'm going to set it to 500 milliwatts, and let's watch what it does. The power output jumps now to around 23 to 23.5 dBm, which those of you who have been paying attention will see that that's just a little over 200 milliwatts, not 500 milliwatts. The reason for that, I don't know. I mean, we've got some coax in here, a different pigtail. Also, this transmitter is actually buried in the quad. It's in some heavy heat shrink. It's got other stuff tucked on top of it. It's no airflow. It's the worst case scenario. Uh, we might see that if we spun the props and gave it some airflow, that output power would go up. But what I think is most interesting here is that I left it sitting this way for a while and I was a little surprised because I've overheat. If you leave it sitting long enough, I know it'll shut down. I've had that happen. But I left it sitting there for quite a while, and it just stayed right there at around 23.5 dBm, rock solid. And yeah, sure, let's do 800 milliwatts while we're at it. Why not? No problem. 800 milliwatts. We're at 24.32 dBm, which I will put on the screen what the actual milliwatts that is. Uh, and again... Despite the fact that the darn thing has to be heating up pretty crazily. Oh, now it's at 27. Wow, yeah, see, it jumped up 28. Oh, it's going up. <laughs> 26, 24. Maybe because I was wiggling it, it was getting a little different. Now it's holding at 27. Okay, so there you go. 27 dBm. I'll put the number on screen, what that actual number is. And again, despite the fact that it gets hot, and despite the fact that we know that if you leave it sitting here long enough, it will shut down. It stays really steady right up until that moment where it shuts down. So what's the final word then on the Furious FPV Stealth Race? Let's start by acknowledging 
the really cool universally positive thing about it, which is the Bluetooth app, the, the smartphone app that connects via Bluetooth. Yeah, you do have to have an external Bluetooth antenna, by the way. I'm not sure if that was obvious from my videos. It, it, it plugs in and it's another thing to mount on your quad, similar to the NFC antenna that the Immersion RC Tramp has to let you use the wand. It's another thing you have to install on the quad. The Bluetooth is not just built into the video. It's so small that where would they put it? But the ability to use a smartphone app to manage the transmitter is pretty freaking cool. At a price of 30 bucks, you got to compare the the, uh, the Stealth Race directly to the Unify Race. They both have very similar feature sets on paper, 25 milliwatts, 200 milliwatts, and pit mode. And uh, let's see, Unify Race has smart audio. The uh, Stealth Race has uh, tramp telemetry, so identical in that respect. Their ability to output the rated power is similar the Unify does win. The Unify puts out a consistently higher output power, but the thing that makes me kind of suspicious of the, the Stealth is it just gets so much hotter. Even though it's not dropping its transmit power and it's still holding at maybe 1 dB less than the Unify, it's getting way hotter. Without enough airflow, it's getting to 70, 80, 90 degrees Celsius, even more. Whereas the Unify just kind of hung out there at 40 or 60 degrees and stayed there. And that seems like a good thing to me. The other thing that has to be acknowledged in any comparison of video transmitters is that TBS's customer support and quality control are pretty much second to none. They help, they go so far out of their way to help their customers when their customers have had problems. Uh, when they release a product with a problem, like for example, the lap timers they released, the first round of lap timers had issues. They did a recall, they replaced circuit boards. They, they really go so far out of their way to take care of their customers. Whereas Furious, it seems like the, the, the reputation for customer service isn't the same with Furious as it is with TBS. So given that these guys are the same price, and have very similar feature sets. The fact that the, the Unify race has better heat dissipation, shocking, I know, and TBS has great reputation for customer service, means I think I would spend my 30 bucks on a Unify race instead of the Stealth. Unless I was just dying to get the Bluetooth feature, in which case maybe I would go with the Furious Stealth. There you go. That's my opinion of this. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comment section, of course. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it and happy flying.